Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Every Movie Ever. This is the show where we're reviewing every movie ever made, and here we are. We're still at it, and this time I thought it would be fun to have a special where we're going to look at all of the Marvel movies. Now, I know what you're saying. Longtime viewers, you're saying, hey, I think you already reviewed some of those. I did. I know I've reviewed Iron Man 3 and Ant-Man at least, and we, so we will not be reviewing those today. If you want to see those reviews, you're going to have to look back at older episodes. Which episodes? I don't know. Too lazy to find out. But what I do know is that the whole Marvel movie craze as we know it today started a few years back with the first Iron Man movie starring Robert Downey Jr. This is a fun movie. It was, you know, when it was announced, there was, we weren't sure what it was going to be like, and then they said Robert Downey Jr. was going to star, and we all thought, hey, that seems like pretty good casting. And they got John Favreau to direct it, and John Favreau's a pretty good director. You know, Swingers, Rounders, those are pretty good movies, so we thought it would be pretty good, and you know what? It's pretty good. As far as how it holds up nowadays, you know, it's, uh, I, again, I got to stick with pretty good. It's fun movie, you know, good effects. This is kind of a so-so story. Jeff Bridges, a little bit wasted, but still fun. Gwyneth Paltrow, a lot of fun. Movie's fun. Three stars. Now, what I feel like some people probably forget is that the same year as Iron Man, we got a Hulk movie. We got The Incredible Hulk. And Marvel kind of went in two different directions with their first two movies. With Iron Man, they kind of had the, you know, the sort of tongue-in-cheek you know, fun superhero movie that has really defined the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And they had the Hulk, which was a much more straightforward, traditional superhero movie starring Ed Norton. You know what? It's not a bad movie, but it's not all that good either. You can see, you know, Mark Ruffalo ends up being a better Hulk. You can see why they decided not to kind of follow that particular path. Uh, the, the villain in the movie, The Abomination, is sort of uninspired and doesn't really go anywhere. It's, it's an okay movie. It's not as good as Iron Man. It's near the bottom of your Marvel movies. I'm going to give it two stars. Next movie out of the gate, Iron Man 2. Also not very good. This one, it just doesn't, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. I rewatched it recently thinking, well, maybe, you know, maybe it's aged a little bit better. It has not. The best thing in the whole movie is Sam Rockwell as uh, as uh, some somebody Hammer, I forget, Jason Hammer? I think Jason Hammer. He's the rival Tony Stark, and Sam Rockwell, as always, is terrific. He, he brings all this stuff to the character where it's not, I'm not sure if it's in the script, but it really comes through on the screen where Hammer is a guy who's trying to be Tony Stark but isn't very good at it. He wants to be on the stage dancing with the ladies and stuff, but he can't, he can't do it, and Sam Rockwell really sells that. The rest of the movie doesn't work. The plot doesn't make any sense. There are long stretches where nothing happens. The plot where the thing in the Iron Man's chest is killing him seems really perfunctory. It's just not very good. Two stars. Thor is the movie that kind of reignited my faith then in the Marvel movies. Because it's another really fun movie. This is the one where Thor kind of ends up in Kansas and has to do the fish out of water thing. Uh, he hangs around with Natalie Portman and her friends. And it's a fun movie. The plot is, you know, not terribly memorable. Loki is a great villain, and so that's always fun to watch. Kenneth Branagh's direction gets a little, is a little much, I think, sometimes. He's big on canting the camera on its side for a lot of the movie for some reason. But you know what? It's a fun movie. I like it. Three stars. Joe Johnson, the guy who brought us The Rocketeer, which is a movie that I love, especially when I was a kid, he brings us the first Captain America movie, Captain America, the first Avenger. Does it need that title? No, but that's what they gave it, so we're going to live with it. So this is the World War II origin of Captain America and some assorted World War II adventures. This one's a lot of fun. I like this movie a lot. I like the origin of Cap. I like seeing the, you know, the little scrawny Cap, and I thought the effects for that were really good. I like seeing his, you know, early adventures and his not, you know, being in his kind of having to work with just the USO at the beginning. I like Peggy Carter a lot. She, of course, got her own fantastic series played by the terrific Haley Atwell. Tommy Lee Jones is in this movie. Stanley Tucci is in this movie. The movie kind of falls apart a little bit as it moves into the third act. They sort of lose the narrative thread a little bit. And Hugo Weaving's Red Skull is a little generic, but still kind of over-the-top fun. This is a fun one. I think this one is a little bit of a step above 
the first group of Marvel movies, three and a half stars. So of course, all of the heroes come together for the Avengers in a movie that was something that was unlike anything we'd ever seen, where we finally get to see all of these characters from these different movies team up. It was the thing that made Marvel as a publisher unique and exciting, and they brought it to the movies, and it went amazingly. This is a really fun movie. Joss Whedon directed it. He does a great job with it. The interpersonal dynamics between all the characters are a lot of fun, and the characters themselves each get moments to shine. And not just Cap, Iron Man, and Thor. We got a Hulk who, for the first time, was a Hulk you could really love. Black Widow got a lot of stuff to do. Hawkeye didn't get much stuff to do, but that's okay. This is a really fun movie. I think it lags a little bit in the second act. But it's so much fun that if it's on TV, you're going to sit and watch it. I'm going to have to give it four stars. Thor The Dark World, this is you know Thor 2, essentially, is super forgettable. So much so that I'm standing here to tell you about it, I can't remember very much about it at all. I really can't. It's all right. It's just, it's very, it's there. It's got some fun moments, but that's all you can really say about it. Two and a half stars. Then we get Captain America, the Winter Soldier. If you thought Thor 2 was, you know, between Thor 2 and Iron Man 2, maybe you think, oh, part 2 in the Marvel movies isn't going to be anything to call home about. Well, Captain America, Winter Soldier blows him away. A great movie in the style of 70s conspiracy, conspiracy thrillers with Steve Rogers figuring out that Robert Redford is up to no good and that Hydra has infiltrated S.H.I.E.L.D., this movie is so much fun. Chris Evans is terrific in it. You know, he's, you watch this movie and you see that he's a star. The Russo brothers, who wrote and directed this one, kind of take the whole Marvel formula up another notch. I love this one. The third act, I have a couple of third act problems, but they're mostly stuff you can ignore. You got to give this one four and a half stars. Guardians of the Galaxy. This was maybe the first time that the naysayers came out and said, uh, maybe Marvel's going to lose their touch. I don't know about this movie. Which is an article that you see now every time that Marvel's going to release a movie. Maybe Doctor Strange will suck. Maybe this one will suck. But Guardians of the Galaxy surprised everybody by being a really fun and exciting and funny movie about a group of misfits, including a talking raccoon and a tree that kind of talks but doesn't talk much. Uh, and Chris Pratt from Parks and Recreation and a bunch of other people stealing stuff and causing mischief out in space. It's poppy and it's colorful. James Gunn's irreverent sense of humor shines in the script and direction. This movie is, it's just so much fun. In a, in a series of movies that are fun movies, this one really stands out. It's a four-star movie. Avengers Age of Ultron is pretty good. It's over long. It has some really cool sequences in it. Um, watching uh, Hulk fight Iron Man and Iron Man's big Hulk fighting armor, that's really fun. But the whole thing, there, it doesn't quite congeal. It's certainly not what the first Avengers was. It's nice to get some more screen time for Hawkeye and the stuff at Hawkeye's house and with Hawkeye's family is some of my favorite stuff. Again, the fight scenes are all pretty cool. Doesn't quite get there, but still, you know, it's a good time. Three stars. Civil War, this is Captain America 3. I love this. I know there are some naysayers out there that say it's not as good as Winter Soldier. I thought it was better. I love the themes. I love the emotion. I, the, you know, the hero pits pitted against heroes was satisfying both, especially for that big airport fight, but also on an emotional level. This was a movie that I, I felt like you could really sink your teeth into. And Marvel movies in general, they have kind of a villain problem where the villains, the villains kind of can't live up to the heroes. The heroes are so great and played so well that the villains can't quite get there. And this movie's there too, but what I like about it is that Daniel Bruhl's Zemo, he doesn't have a big world-dominating scheme. There's a red herring in there where you think the movie's going to go a certain way with what his scheme's going to be, but then you find out it's a smaller, more emotional revenge thing for him, and I think that's really great. There's some new characters in this one along between Spider-Man and Black Panther, plus like all of the Avengers except for Thor and Hulk, but they all get balanced really well, and they still are able to make it definitely a Captain America movie. This one's a great time at the movies that really combines that Marvel fun with some thematic and emotional weight to really bring it all the way to the top five big stars. 
Doctor Strange was pretty good. It was pretty good. It's another origin movie. We're getting a little tired of the origin movies, especially the, you know, kind of the smart-ass smart guy becomes superhero movie. It, there's, you know, there's some cool stuff in this. There's some cool visuals. The effects are pretty cool. Benedict Cumberbatch is pretty cool, I, although I wish they would have let him keep his British accent. It's a little bit forgettable. Of all of the Marvel movies, it's maybe the one that I'm the least interested in watching again, so I can really only give it two and a half stars. Now, of course, for those of you watching this episode, when it comes out, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 is a recent one. This is it's the movie that inspired me to say, hey, maybe we should look at all the Marvel movies. I liked this one a lot. You know, it, it's this was, we just talked about how the villains don't really connect in the Marvel movies. And in this case, with Kurt Russell playing Star-Lord's dad and having some maybe not so pure motives, I don't want to give a lot away because it's a new movie, but there's, a, again, an emotional core here that really connects. And the movie becomes all about family and family disappointing, but also like looking to non-conventional family in, in a very cool way. Michael Rooker's great. The Guardians cast is great. This is, this is a top-notch sequel. Four stars. So we've run out of your big Marvel Cinematic Universe movie, so let's look back at the Marvel movies before Marvel themselves started making movies. Let's look at Sony's first Spider-Man movie, the Tobey Maguire Spider-Man movie, which is pretty fun. Sam Raimi of Evil Dead fame directs, and he does a pretty good job in a pretty good Spider-Man movie. It gets dragged down a bit by, like, first off, let me say I li really like Willem Dafoe's Green Goblin. I like how unhinged and weird he's being, but his kind of overall armor body suit with the full face mask that doesn't move, that gets a little cheesy. The whole thing doesn't quite come together, but it's a lot of fun. I'm going to give it two and a half stars. Spider-Man 2, on the other hand, everything's firing on all cylinders. Alfred Molina is great as Doc Ock. Everybody else is back from the first one in a movie that really does Spider-Man right and really tells a classic Spider-Man story with amazing moments, particularly for me, the fight and the conclusion of the fight where uh, Peter's trying to stop uh, an L train from being derailed is great. This is, especially at the time, this was like one of the peaks of superhero movie making and they really felt like they found the essence of Spider-Man, of the, of the nerdy kid with the superpowers, who has trouble talking to the girls still, and who struggles to help Aunt May, and struggles with his work, and struggles with his life, but still has these amazing powers, and the angst, and the fun, and of it all coming together. This, is, this stands up still as a really terrific superhero movie. Four and a half stars. Spider-Man 3, however, I, here's my review for Spider-Man 3. <laughs> One and a half stars. Now, the first X-Men movie is a lot like the first Spider-Man movie. It's got some good stuff in it. Hugh Jackman is immediately terrific as Wolverine, and Patrick Stewart and Ian McKellen were, like, born to play uh, Professor X and Magneto. But the plot is dumb. The movie looks kind of oddly cheap in some places. It's I, two and a half stars. X2, a bit better. Like, they have a better plot, better, you know, better action, better adventure. Uh, this one focuses on them going to beat up the guy that made Wolverine have metal claws and stuff. It's pretty good. I remember at the time thinking it was really good, but recent we watch is just saying, nah, it's pretty good. Brian Singer, P.S., is the guy who directed the first and the second X-Men movie, and he comes back to direct a couple more later. I don't think he's all that great. You know, his movies don't quite connect. They don't, he can't get the home run in, I don't think. And so while I think this one's pretty good, the best I can do for it is three stars. So my review, so you might be noticing a trend. So the X-Men and the Spider-Man movies are not so different. First movie is pretty so-so. Second movie is better for Spider-Man, way better for X-Men, kind of better. And then the third movie, <laughs> they, they blew this one. They decided they would try and do the Dark Phoenix story, and they just blew it. They brought in Brett Ratner, one of the dumbest directors out there, and made a real dumb movie, star and a half. Now, X-Men First Class, this is probably my favorite one of the X-Men movies. This is the one where it's back in the 60s, James McAvoy's Professor X, Michael Fassbender, who might be my favorite actor right now. 
That might be true. He's great as Magneto. Jennifer Lawrence is pretty good as Mystique. It doesn't make any sense when you try to connect it to the other X-Men movies, but the period setting and Michael Vaughn's direction, Michael Vaughn, who's done movies like uh, Stardust and Kingsman, it's really great. It is a fun movie. It's still, for, I don't know what it is about these X-Men movies where I feel like maybe uh, maybe 20th Century Fox doesn't want to, they want it to be, I don't know, dark or angsty or something. They can never be bright and fun for whatever reason. That holds them back. But this one's still pretty fun. Kevin Bacon's bad guy kind of sucks. But again, the movie's pretty fun. Also, January Jones is Emma Frost, one of my favorite characters from the comics is no good. I'm sorry, January Jones. I like you and other stuff. Not so much here. Still, I don't want to say it's not a good movie. It's a good movie. It's three and a half stars. X-Men Days of Future Past was supposed to have Brian, was supposed to have Matthew Vaughn back, but Brian Singer went, nah, I'm going to direct it. And did he pooch it up? A little bit. This is the one where there's weird time travel so that Hugh Jackman Wolverine can hang out with Michael Fassbender, Magneto and the others, but also in the future, Ian McKellen, Magneto, and Patrick Stewart, Professor Xavier are there. This movie doesn't make a whole hell of a lot of sense, but it's a lot of fun to see all of the different X-Men screwing around on screen. If you're a longtime X-Men reader, and you're used to big, convoluted, confusing stories, this feels a lot like that. It's fun, but it doesn't reach the highs of first class. Three stars. X-Men Apocalypse, yeah. Brian, Sw Brian Singer whiffs it again in a real two-star movie that doesn't really go anywhere and nothing really happens. It's saved somewhat by our returning Fastbenders and Lawrences um, and by a, pretty, you know, a fun younger cast, including Sansa from Game of Thrones playing Jean Grey. But otherwise, again, it's a movie that doesn't make a lot of sense. It, it straight up just rips off the Quicksilver sequence from Days of Future Past, which was the best part of that movie, and tries to do it again less successfully. Yeah, I said it before, I'll say it again. Two stars. Deadpool, the X-Men movies decide to do something different and do an R-rated crazy movie, is pretty fun. I don't really like Ryan Reynolds, but he's pretty fun here. I gotta be honest, it's a pretty fun movie. It suffers somewhat from being cheap. They didn't want to spend a lot of money in this thing, and you can kind of tell the, the whole thing's confined to just a couple of locations, which makes the movie feel kind of small and claustrophobic, but it not, not in a good way or an intentional way. But it's still pretty fun. Three stars. Now, what you folks might forget out there is that the whole Marvel superhero movie thing did not start with Iron Man, and it did not start with the X-Men. The movie that made the studio say, hey, we should be making superhero movies again, was Blade, the Wesley Snipes Vampire Hunter movie, which was based on a character from the old Tomb of Dracula Marvel comics. The first Blade movie is pretty, it's good. It's not great. It's, uh, it lacks, I think, it lacks style and vision, but it's pretty cool. And Wesley Snipes runs around fighting vampires. So, you know, it pretty, it's two and a half. It's two and a half. Now, obviously, there have been other Marvel movies, but I haven't seen any of them all that recently, and I don't really remember them that well. So we're not going to talk about Howard the Duck. We're not going to talk about the Wolverine movies, which I thought were very forgettable. Haven't seen Logan yet, though, so fingers crossed on that. We're not going to talk about uh, Blade Trinity, but we are going to talk about Blade Two, where suddenly somebody decided, hey, let's give a crazy auteur a superhero movie, and they got Guillermo del Toro to direct Blade II. So this thing has all of your del Toro hall hallmarks, including super creepy super vampires that hunt regular vampires, where the super vampires, their jaws kind of open up like that. And that's pretty cool. Uh, you got Ron Perlman, because it's a Guillermo del Toro movie, and he's fun. The whole thing's pretty fun. It's not Del Toro's best, and some of the CG effects work does not hold up, but man, it's a good time. Three and a half stars. So thank you guys for watching every movie ever. I hope you enjoyed our tour through just about every Marvel movie ever. We'll be back next time as we keep trying to review every movie that's ever been made. I feel like we got to be close, right? There can't be that many more movies we've got to talk about. But we'll find out next week on Every Movie Ever.